What? Oh no. Oh no, they didn't. Looks like they did. Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today I wanted to talk about subscriptions, why apps are going to subscription, why it seems like everyone's changing over. And so today I'm gonna to cover why developers and companies want to go to recurring revenue. I'm gonna talk about what we can expect as users when they do change to this model. And I'm gonna just give my overall feelings about subscription versus uh, pay up front uh, at the end. So let's jump into it. So first up, why are companies doing this? Why do they do it when there's always backlash, there's always people upset about it? Why don't they just stick with what they used to do? And so there's a bunch of things happening at once. Uh, one thing is the cost of software is just dropped over the years. And so things that used to cost hundreds of dollars, then cost $100, then cost $10, and now are totally free and you can have multiple ways to do it for free. Um, there are other things with like recurring revenue on the App Store, on Apple's App Store, uh, for most things, for a lot of companies, uh, they will pay Apple 30% of whatever their customers pay them as a fee for being on the App Store and using Apple services. Uh, that's actually dropped to 15% for small developers recently. There's a small business program you can jump into. But for years, uh, it's been 30% of paid upfront things and then recurring revenue. For the first year of that recurring revenue that they get you set up for, they would pay 30% to Apple. And then after that first year, they would pay 15% to Apple. So their revenue would go up um, significantly after the first year if they were able to keep you as a customer. So they would get more of that money that you pay. So the money you pay stays the same, but the money the developer gets would go up. Additionally, there's a very important thing with recurring revenue that gives you predictability in your income. And so when you do a paid upfront app, if you look at what most developers see, what mostly happens with these paid upfront apps is that you'll see a big spike up front and then it drops down to close to zero and actually zero in a lot of cases for developers. So they have these blog posts, they have these YouTube videos that come up when they release a new app and it's uh, paid upfront and there's all this press and they get a lot of downloads and that's it, <laughs> that's it for them. It really stops at that point. And so they have these like months where they do great and then the rest of the year, the revenue is really, really low, but they're still paying rent, they're still paying mortgages, they're still buying food, they're still paying their staff for all this time. And so as a company, having all of your revenue locked up in literally like a couple weeks um, every time you do a major update is super unpredictable and hard to manage. Whereas recurring revenue, if you're getting monthly from a lot of users and yearly from some other users, that makes your revenue more predictable because it's continually going. You kind of know month to month what you're gonna be earning. It's gonna fluctuate, but generally you know what you're gonna be making. And so that's much easier for you to run your business. And so that's important for the businesses that are running these apps. Additionally, and this is really relevant to things that use third-party APIs, I think about weather apps, especially Twitter, app, uh, tw Twitter apps as well, there are costs to operating these apps, not just paying the staff that you're going to use to develop the app, to support the app, but for actually just people opening the app and using it. So when you use a weather app, when they call the API to get access to the weather data and to get radar and all that stuff, every one of those costs the developer money. And so every time you use the app, even if you paid for it five years ago and you know you don't call in for support, you don't ask for updates, you're totally fine with how the app is today, you're still costing the developer money because you're using those APIs. And so they have to pay even though you're not paying them. And again, hopefully they, pay, they charge enough for the app up front so that that's maintainable. But the odds are because software prices have gone down, they weren't able to do that. And so they're losing money. We saw this with an app called Check the Weather a couple years ago, which had to shut down. They had to shut off access to the app so the app no longer functioned because they weren't selling the app anymore, but people were still using it and it was costing them money every month. And to prevent themselves from going broke from people using this app that they couldn't support anymore, they had to shut it down because it was costing them too much money. But it's not a one-way road. There are the producers who are making the content, making the apps, but there's also the consumers, us, who are buying them. And so I think the most important thing that we as consumers can expect from these apps when they switch to a, a subscription model is we should expect them to provide updates. If I start paying for TweetBot 6 today in January 2021, and then in January next year, it's basically the exact same app, nothing's really changed. I think that's kind of hard to justify. And as a customer, I'm gonna feel a little slighted is maybe a harsh word, but I'd feel a little weird about it. Um, again, tw Twitter is a little bit of a different situation because again, they're using third-party services that are costing them money most likely. And so 
it could just be going to pay that. But I would, as a consumer, expect to be getting constant updates um, or at least consistent updates with new features, with enhancements to the app, uh, with updates to, that support iOS 15 this fall. I, I would expect TweetBot to do that because I'm paying a recurring uh, subscription to it. That I think is the most um, reasonable expectation when these apps switch. And I think it's totally reasonable. I think it's absolutely part of the give and take that they should be considering is that if you're going to ask people to pay every month, they should be seeing something come back for that uh, fee that they're paying. So I am more positive about subscription apps than I think a lot of people are. A lot of people just will not do them or really hate them, even if they're literally like carrot weather, which is $1 a year, people don't wanna do it. While I get it, um, I think that the value that I get from these apps that I do choose to pay for is super valuable and I'm happy to do it. Um, I'm also, I guess, fortunate enough to be able to do it. I know there are people who um, are actually just not able to afford the recurring subscription every month and for that, I totally get it. I would say for things like TweetBot, um, I don't know if there's as much reason to be super upset about it. Um, you can be upset that they switched models and you can be like, well, I'm not gonna do it. That's great, TweetBot 5, which was paid up front, still exists, you can still use it, it still functions just the way it did before yesterday when there was a new app out, and you were enjoying it pre presumably yesterday. So you can keep using that. That's the whole point, that's the whole value of these paid up front apps, is that you don't have to update whenever there's an update. You get it forever and you can keep using it. And so with TweetBot, if you don't like the new model, then stick with the old one. The old model has those benefits of you still being able to use it, of still being able to use a fully functional premium Twitter experience for free at this point effectively because you paid for it up to five years ago. And so if you don't want the new thing, don't pay for the new thing. But if you do want the new thing, again, I think it's okay. I think that TweetBot's pricing is totally fair. And I think that the expectation is that they're going to continue to update it. And I hope that TapBots is able to do that and continue to make this feel like it's a good value because I think the app is really good. Uh, I think that they have a lot of potential ahead of them. They're using the new Twitter API. That's a rabbit hole we don't need to go down today. So let's just say, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button. I will see you here next time on A Better Computer. Bye-bye.